Hello everybody, my name is Griff. I am here going over the newest Trial of the Mighty as well as our newest Mana Spiral which belongs to Gala Leaf. As you can see Trial of the Mighty says new here and we have Paro's Trial. We actually got the information on uh, Gala Leaf Spiral uh, a couple days ago but I wanted to wait until the banner was out or rather the fight was out so that I could go over it. This fight uses bow and axe and staff flame units so i'm just going to try to fit together a team that i can use here that makes the most sense and i think in this case we're going to pull out uh where is she we're going to pull out vanessa and we have any other bow units we can use i don't actually know i actually don't have a lot of units in this element in these two weapon types you know i guess we'll just do mim even though she's not uh fully maxed out here actually you know what let's just max her out here as i talk about this spiral a little bit so the interesting thing about this spiral is that this is probably one of the biggest spirals in terms of accessibility that they've done from like what the unit has before to what they have now um a lot of this spiral isn't even damage related or like uh like you know like damage modifiers damage ability but it's much more in the sense of utility um for starters his first skill now has two different effects uh it always had two different effects it always had the shielding and striking stance for those of you who don't know uh leaf kind of switches between these two shielding and striking stances and in this case now he switches between them and now they actually have different effects in terms of what they're able to offer in the terms of the shielding stance, he now offers a 10% HP buff to the team. Uh, for those who don't know, those stack up to around uh, 30%. And the cool part about them is that what more does she have? Oh, not too bad. The cool part about um, a print like that, or a uh, or an ability like that rather, is that you're able to kind of uh, you know just cycle through HP buffs very quickly with something like that. Uh, which is very good because what you want to do usually when you're using a unit that uh, gives you HP buffs is you want to really stack up your team early so that you're able to get more uh, effects out, able to have more tankiness as the fight goes on. And in a case like this, where you're talking about a very powerful um, wind unit, one of the biggest problems with that is that originally most people would, would have relied on... Uh, this might have... You know, we're going to switch low into the front actually. And we're going to give him healing skills. A fight like this, or a new fight rather, uh, with wind units would usually rely on some kind of, uh, you know, like Loen to give them the HP effect. But really what's coming out now is Forma Noel, who is a better healer. And she has one of the biggest uh, healing modifiers in the game. So a lot of people don't want to run Loen, but a lot of people still want that HP up. Leaf can now bring that HP up in an offensive role especially in an auto composition or in a non-auto composition, which is very, very helpful. That's a very big deal. We're not going to auto this, I don't think. I actually don't remember much of this fight. Oh, he gets stunned. And there's the trial of the money. Okay. I actually don't remember this fight at all. So if I die here, that will be unfortunate. Uh, essentially, though, as I was saying, you know, you really want that HP up effect on offensive units because you can't really have it on someone like Former Noel. Oh, oh my gosh, this guy's moved so much. Um, but essentially, that's just basically the point of that first skill in terms of the striking, in terms sort of the shielding, rather. And in the striking, they actually gave him Dispel on it, as well as Poison effects. So now he is able to inflict Poison on his... I completely missed that attack. He's able to inflict Poison on his... You know what? Let me switch over. This is I can actually hit them. He's able to uh, inflict Poison on his skill one. Very cool. Then, as far as his skill 2, his skill 2 is literally exactly the same, which maybe is a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. Then, as we continue down this list, his first ability now gives him 100% skill prep. So again, as I said, with this first skill giving that max HP buff, it is a big deal to have some sort of skill prep in order to get that out very early into the quest, be able to cycle through those things very quickly. And now, in something like this, where you're talking like an ability that is able to just give you 100% skill prep, you don't need to slot that in at all. Why am I stunned? Okay. I forgot this fight was like this. Can I switch to anyone? Yes, I can. Let's just get a dragon and try to get rid of these. So 
keys right on top of one, so we'll just try to get rid of it with that. And then hopefully the other one will just get rid of it with that. There we go. Now they're gone. Okay, so now I think... I don't know if that gave you a buff, or if that just gets rid of the buff he had. I actually remember this a little bit better now. Uh, in that regard. I really don't like how much he moves. This is really annoying to play against. Oh, I'm gonna die now. Wow, I actually, yeah, like I literally just died because he just moved around so much and stunned me. I guess I need more stun resist units. Okay, we'll reach out that. Uh, going back into his uh, spiral though, again, one of the huge things about this is that he does have this uh, skill prep, as I said, but then he also gets amps whenever he uses a skill. So he is actually going to be having an amp unit. This has a level, max level of three, I believe. So he is actually going to be able to bring this up a lot. So again, kind of playing back into that utility role that he has in this context of a unit. He really is someone who, okay, I walked right into it and I'm stunned because I can't roll out of it. Uh, he is really someone who will benefit from the skill prep and kind of benefit from the more supportive role that he's being dealt. And then as we go to his second, he just has the double affliction. Did that stun me? It did. Okay, you know what? We're just going to slot in stun rest to these units. Um... He's going to have that, as I said, he's going to be able to just have the normal trial of the mighties where, you know, your afflictions give you that 15% strength. And then his last ability actually increases his flurry damage as well as inflicts his chance, increases his chance of inflicting poison as well as the duration of poison. So he actually is going to be a more damage dealing, uh, kind of just tankish kind of character, kind of more supportish. And he, she has stun risk. Okay. So let's actually take this off. Let's go, actually no, we're going to take off this for this, give it to me from her, just making a little stun res here. like this so now we have the stun res and now we have the strength and now we have the skill damage nice and we'll just copy that over onto her as well she already actually has it but she doesn't have the proper uh setup to make the most of it so again let's just get rid of this let's get rid of that and then on her first we can actually give her something other than skill damage uh hmm do we have scorch run punisher Let's just give that to her. And now Vanessa needs her own flurry strength again. Bam. Can I actually put it on low lane is the question. I guess I could, but eh, it's fine. Low lane will be fine, I think. We'll just start this as is. Again, more focusing on the uh, on those little orbs that come out, because those are really annoying. Uh, but going back to Leaf, this is one of the best, I think one of the better uses of the uh, Omnicrite that we've had recently. Uh, it really does take full benefit of it because he really is a unit that you could use right away. Um, as I said, he does get that Dispel option, which is very good if you don't have someone like Knot or Basil, who really, uh, or Basilisk rather, who is going to really take full effect of an uh, ability like that, who already is pretty, pretty basically just dispelled, focused. But he does have his own perks to him. He does really have his own strength. It is something that you can make full use of. And if you're looking to bring up your win composition and you already have him, then he is a good example of something you can use. So that's my thoughts on him specifically because of how just, you know, just how strong he is in general. He really does take full effect of these, uh, these buffs. This is one of the better chances where we've actually seen, again, a unit that focuses more on utility than just damage. You know, he, d he doesn't really have that big of numbers in the sense of what he's able to do. But he does have the ability to come out with a lot of different ways to do damage. Which is very cool. Because to me, that's kind of what I want from a unit. I want a unit that's more utility based. Really brought into the next generation of Dragalia with what they're able to do. And this Leaf Sparrow is perfect because it really gives him the tools that he would need in order to do something like that. We're going to have to be quick here. hope that kills it yes it did okay all right he's he's below half health at this point 
So let's just hope we can knock him out. I really should equip more bow damage, or force strike damage rather, on my bow units, because I really only end up using the force strike. It's just how I play them. I know it's not really optimal, but that's what I usually do. He's doing his really annoying attack. Let's try to dodge it this time, that we don't get stunned over and over. I hate those those force uh, Curse of Nihility knockbacks. We actually have Dragon again, so let's just go right to her. You know, we might actually just be able to... Yeah, we'll, we'll go for it. Might as well. I don't think he actually gets any... Oh yeah, see, I have less strength now. And I'm out of my dragon form. But so, he's pretty weak. And those do actually give dragon transformation when you're not in a dragon form. When you're in a dragon form, you don't actually get any dragon transformation from them. But, now that I'm not, I can just go to him. And this should... So, nice. There's a master clear. Not too bad at all. Just need really stun res units. Need mobile units that are able to move around the map a lot. But I'm not going to be Omnicrating Leaf simply because I already have Basilos and have not. So I am actually going to be doing these dailies. But I just wanted to show off my massacre. It took a little bit longer than I thought it would since I died the first time. But you know, that's part of the fun. That's part of the magic of uh, Dragalia Channel. You know, having these uh, these failed runs. As you can see, uh, I'm almost to the next level. And actually, on, if we go back to the previous screen, you're going to see I have 33 wings. I've actually been hardcore grinding uh, my weapon bonuses. I actually finished them. So my weapon bonuses are done, which is great. But yeah, I have a lot of wings because uh, I don't really have much to spend them on. Other than, I guess, Legend Lilith, which I haven't even touched yet. Or, I guess, Agito Weeklies or something like that. I don't know. Not a lot of content to use your wings on these days, but I'll try to get them down. But yep, yeah, that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Let's find Leaf. Let's just take a look at him. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.